Okay, we're back live here at Strata Conference. This is Silicon Angle's coverage of O'Reilly Media Strata Conference. It's theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the city from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. Hi, I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're here with Scott Hauser, who's the Vice President of Marketing of Hadapt. Hadapt won the Best in Show at uh, Hadoop World, the Strata plus Hadoop World last fall. Uh, Scott, welcome back. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Good to see you, so, you guys. Uh, yeah, so you know, you went from <laughs> best in show startup to now it's like throwing you right into the fire. So you guys yeah. started a trend, right? Bringing SQL to Hadoop, everybody's now talking about it. Uh, you guys in, in, in Cloudera with Impala and the, the Strata last fall. Sure. And now we're seeing sort of everybody jumping on that bandwagon. Yep. Um, earlier we had EMC on, we just had Hortonworks on. Um, what do you make of all this? I think you know, it's, it's great for the market in the sense that you know, people are starting to uh, appreciate what we've been evangelizing for several years and that we believe that the, the world of SQL and Hadoop would converge at some point and transition the way that people look at doing business intelligence and real um, analytics. You know? And so I think if you look at what we've done and the approach that we've taken in embedding a real relational engine inside of Hadoop, um, it's very differentiated in that sense, but it's also, it's validation of the market. I know that uh, Daniel mentioned that when we were on last time about you know, some of the things that were coming, but I think if you look at architecturally the, the steps that we've taken and the work that we've done um, from day one, it gives us a very unique position inside the market. Yeah, so um, I wasn't at the announcement. John was there and Jeff was too. On Monday, the, uh, the Greenfield announcement, they got pretty sure. aggressive, particularly against Impala, showing mm -hmm. some, uh, some, some uh, 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 and Hive rather, sure. uh, I said Impala, but against Hive and showing some benchmarks. I don't think they called out Hadapt specifically. No, they, they didn't say no. anything So about that's Hadapt. sort of interesting by omission, but we asked them about it. Sure. Um, and essentially, uh, uh, the response was, was, look, we've got an 11 year old database, which is mature. Yep. You, know, you guys, these guys are Hadapt, you know, we don't really know much about it, but it's sure. kind of new. How would you sort of respond to that, sort of we're mature and, and 11 year old yeah. versus you're the new kid in the block and just an infant and got a lot to learn? Well, I think the reality is, um, if you look at some of the most successful MPP platforms that have been out in the, in the last several years, one of which was Vertica, which you know, you're well aware of, we came from. Right. Well, one of the founders and, and the real technical innovation that founded that company was by Daniel Labati, who's one of our co-founders. So I think we have a lot of understanding and experience in relational database technologies. Um, but if you look at what we've done from the start, we've embedded and, and created this unification where SQL runs inside of Hadoop, and we have the ability to deal with industry standard SQL, not HiveQL, not you know, some other uh, dialect, but real SQL. And if you look at what EMC's announcement is, and, and you know, I'm not an expert on their technology, but what I understand it to be is it's still sort of a connector-based methodology. So if you look at where the, the SQL engine runs, it's still not inside of the HDFS nodes, right? So you still have effectively that you know, connector-based methodology, which creates not only technical challenges, but also operational challenges for the consumer or the customer to leverage that technology. So, um, is that a performance hit as well? Or? Certainly could be, absolutely. Mm -hmm. it's, it creates you know, performance constraints, it creates availability constraints, it creates management constraints. There's a bunch of challenges that that creates with that approach. Um, so I think in a lot of ways, if you look at everybody who's entering this market and the sort of the, the idea of SQL on Hadoop, they're all still two platform approaches, whether it's SQL H from Aster and those guys, or it's the sort of, you know, the uh, approach that you know, Greenplum's taking, it's still two separate platforms that you have to unify with some sort of connector methodology. You, you mentioned some operational challenges. You're, you're a former practitioner. So That's right. A lot, maybe a lot of people know that. The title's, I think, Vice President of Marketing or CMO, sure. but you're an IT guy. That's right. By background. So your, your point about operational is interesting to me. Can you be more specific? Can you peel the onion Certainly. So bit? if you think about the way that everybody has sort of relegated Hadoop in the past, you know, five, six, seven years, it's been, it's an ETL tool, right? Dump some data in, mine, or do some, some basic rudimentary analytics, and try to extract some sort of structure to push it across the connector into a relational database where you're going to basically join that against all the other structured data. And each time you want to run that cycle, if you find something that's interesting, if you don't have the source data there, you have to go back to that point of origin which means that you know, you've got to create these applications and try to make these two completely disparate platforms communicate in some way that an analyst can consume that data or do something meaningful with it. I think you can, you can appreciate the fact that I've got two separate platforms that are you know, inherently unique. The ability to make them behave as one is an incred incredibly complex task and makes data management a very difficult thing for the consumer. Scott, talk about, I mean, you guys were pioneering the SQL. I'm surprised you weren't mentioned because I know you guys have won the award last year here on the show. Sure. Um, but what's your comments on, on the Green Plum? Because obviously it's a data warehousing market. Is it niche? Is it, is, it, is, it, was, is it by design? Do you understand the business strategy? Do you get what they're doing? 
Uh, is there is it just a cheap data warehouse with some throw some Hadoop on some beta warehousing? Uh, what what are they what what are they doing? What's your take on it? I mean, they're, and they were aggressive too, by the way. They sure. weren't. It wasn't like they were you know holding back. You know, going after Hive and yep. had Horton works on just now saying it was a pinata. <laughs> I call it the school school the weak kid in the schoolyard <laughs> Hive. So in Palo Alto, it's not even general availability yet. So sure. you know, they took some shots. What, what, what's your take on that? You know, my sense is that if they look at their customer base and what people are trying to do, they want to provide the entire stack. And so they want to look at their customer base and be able to say, if you want to do big data, we can provide you everything from bare metal on the storage side all the way up to the application interface. And so they're trying to create a market where they have um, sole access to that, that opportunity for the customer. So an Oracle-like strategy. I believe so. So, okay, so let's go back down to what that means. So sure. what kind of range does that give them for future data as code or as, you know, as web apps come out and look at Facebook and all the social activity and the mobile, for example. Does, this, does it give them some range on that? Well, I think the challenge becomes for them is, you know, there will be, there's beauty in the community and what happens in the open source community around Hadoop. And if they're only going to offer these subset of services on top of their own distribution, it really limits what the customer can potentially do, right? And it could put them in a situation where things get delivered by the community that their customers can't consume because they're locked in, right? And if you think about the lock-in So you're concept, saying it's a lock-in strategy? I believe so. You believe so, or you're saying it's lock-in? Well, if you want to, if you want to do SQL services on Hadoop, it's a lock-in strategy, because you can only do SQL services on Hadoop with Greenplum on their own distribution. So it is proprietary, there's some proprietary code involved, and they're sitting on top of HDFS with no MapReduce, that's what I understand, right? That's my understanding. Okay, and, and, but you guys are proprietary too, so why are you not locked well, in? Well, no, so we are not proprietary, we support any distribution that's out there. So if you noticed in EMC's announcement, we were quoted. Right? If yeah, you look yeah, at what's right, going on with right, Intel, right, right. we were involved in that as well. So we support all the distros that are out there. You were on the, were you on yeah, yeah, the so, ecosystem so. chart for, were you on the ecosystem chart for Greenplum? No. We were quoted in their uh, partners in the release. Okay, got it, okay. Yeah, so, so that's what, um, um, I want to help people understand this nuance, right? You got IP, it's not open source. That's correct. So in that sense, it's proprietary. Yep. But your point is that you play in. We play in the community, right? Yeah. So it's, if, if a customer picks distribution A, mm -hmm. we can support running on top of that distribution. And I think the other piece that's very unique about our approach is that, you know, yes, we offer that SQL interface, but we also offer the ability to interact with the data via other tools like MapReduce. We have you know, fully parallelized, full text search via SQL. We enable via this, this application we call the HADAP Development Kit, where you can take and run any Java program as a SQL function. Right, so if you look at things like what's happening in the ecosystem around machine learning, advanced analytics, there's, there's tools popping up all the time, we can take those and provide those to a customer via SQL or any other methodology by which they want to engage with them. All right, so we're tight on time, so we got to get it to customers. So yep. uh, since we saw you last fall at Strata in New York City and Hadoop World, talk about customers, uptake, what can you tell us? So um, a lot of uptake in both financial services and sort of um, customer behavior analytics, so areas where people are trying to understand um, behavior about um, customer adoption, attribution analysis, um, product enhancements. You know, if, if I've got a, a web type application for that a consumer is going to leverage, how can I improve conversion rates? How can I change a user's behavior based upon you know, understanding all the multi-dimensional data, whether it's things about geospatial, whether it's things about text search, whether it's you know, transactional behaviors, you know, the ability to bring those together into one unified platform and provide insights uh, to, the, to the, the, whether it's the product folks or actually the interactive application, that's what we've seen a lot of. And, and but you can confirm you've got paying customers. Oh yes, yeah, yes, okay. yes, yes. You're getting traction. Very much uh, so. And, and um, talk about why you're winning and who you compete with. Are you competing with status quo or are you competing with other sort of platforms in the marketplace? Yeah, I think the majority of the things that we see in the market thus far have been the two platform approach. So we're either going to compete against, you know, hey, we've got two platforms and we want to get more to the Hadoop centric world, but we don't, you know, it doesn't have interactivity, it doesn't have SQL support, doesn't have all these things that we need. We provide, you know, we fill that gap for those types of customers. And the other thing is, you know, with our interactivity, we're slowly chipping away at the necessity of people are saying, well, an MPP is the only thing that can do this particular workload. We're chipping away at those things in a, in a, in a very meaningful way right now. All right, so we're out of time, but I got one last question, which is, is um, well, how come the boys at Division 16 want to fry your butt? What's, what's, what's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll have to defer to is you that on no that. comment? I'll I have know. to defer to you I on that I don't know, I don't know the inside baseball, but uh, some little bird just tweeted me and said, you got to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Chris right, I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well you know more than I do. <laughs> Scott Hauser, 
uh, Vice President of Marketing at Adapt, getting some traction, won Best in Show last year, actually you know, sh shipping product, doing business, so congratulations on all that. And, uh, Thank you, Bob. Great to see you again, man. Thanks Appreciate your, your comments time, on uh, the competition. The competition is heating up and the, uh, the startups are competing and we're going to hear from a lot of other startups around the, high, the heat, uh, heightened competition. We're going to hear from Continuity, Platfora. Uh, we're here with Hadapt, fast growing startup uh, in the big data space. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. We looked at all the programs out there and identified a gap in 